Well, they say that like uh, his his mother died in his house, and he had her in there for a while. Or do you know anything about that? Or yeah, I heard it through another fella that knows him, that's known him a lot longer than me. I don't remember anything about it. I didn't really know Floyd at that time. But his mama raised him by herself, and she died. Kind of sudden, like you know, Floyd. He was he was he was just very young at that time. It might, you know, I'm not sure how long it was. They said it was a pretty good spell that before somebody finally discovered that Floyd's mom was dead when he was a young boy. I don't know, six or seven years old, something like that. He managed to get by on his own without any help from anybody for a pretty good spell there. And, and then when they found found out what happened, they took old Floyd and they and they put him in a dormitory, you know, a children's home. And he his raising was in this little this old dormitory that was run by a Presbyterian church. And I guess that's where old Floyd got his thing with religion, you know, because it was kind of pounded in him when he was living there at that dormitory. Anyway, he went, this was in a little old town down here in Arkansas, over near Hopper. And you know, old Floyd, he'd, he'd go down there, he'd spend a lot of time down there on this river running through there called the Cata River, that he would go down there and he'd spend a lot of time just, just by himself. You know, he didn't really have any friends there at the dormitory, it seems like, from what I heard, that uh, he was, everybody thought he was pretty strange and they just left him alone. So he would go down the Cata River there and go fishing, and camp out on some little island or something. He'd make him camp, and sometimes he'd just stay down there for a while until they come looking for him, and make him go back, you know. A lot of stories about Floyd. Uh, some of the folks who lived around here got a house back here behind the church and there's a couple of houses up the road here and of course they had a couple of stores down here and uh, some people lived in the back of the store and uh, I got hearing music and I could tell it was Floyd they heard Floyd enough to know it was Floyd but they couldn't figure out where in the heck it was coming from and they happened to look down here on the, the, the bell tower up here and Floyd was sitting up on top of the bell tower playing his guitar and he probably played I don't know 30 45 minutes maybe even an hour and people gathering around trying to uh, coax him down there. He just kept on flying. He wouldn't pay any attention to him. And people got looking and they couldn't figure out how Floyd got up to the bell tower to begin with because it wasn't a ladder. They had to get a big long ladder that uh, a guy down here did some barn building with he had. So they put that big long ladder up there and found, somebody finally crawled up there and helped him get down. It's funny because nobody could figure out how he got there yet he seemed so afraid when he started to come down. You know, I'd see him sitting out there sometimes on his porch, you know, he's getting on up in the years by then. But he, he could still pump on a guitar pretty damn good. He went to one of these places where you can go in, you give him a few bucks, and then you sit down and you play a tune and they record it for you. Put it on a 45 record. Well, I think it was one or two records he, he recorded down in New Orleans down there somewhere. He, he tended to travel around every now and then. He might disappear, you know, so he wouldn't, you wouldn't even know he was gone until you went up here and knocked on the door and there was nobody home. And about the time you done, you decided Floyd must be dead somewhere, he'd show up again. 